Okay, our next question is a video. It's from Chris Taylor in Adelaide, South Australia. How can this government impose fishing restrictions on recreational fishermen and their families all across Australia by the imposition of baseless and extensive marine parks while with the next breath they allow into our waters a massive super trawler capable of taking thousands upon thousands of tons of fish species which form a major link in the food chain for the very marine environment they claim to be trying to protect. What is going on? Tony Burke, what is going on? Indeed. Okay, <laughs> uh, I deal with it in two halves. On the, the first half about the marine parks, uh, the, the no-take zones for recreational fishing, for example, off the Queensland coast, you've got to go out hundreds of kilometres before you reach an area where you're not allowed to drop a line uh, under the proposal. Now, if you're taking your child out to learn to fish in a tinny 400 kilometres, you're unlikely to get back that night. And <laughs> I, I just... Uh, yeah, so I, I think there's been... The idea that you know, recreational <laughs> fishing is at an end with these proposals, I think, is silly, uh, misleading, and I actually think Australia can be proud about establishing marine parks in the ocean. I think it is a good thing. And we led the world in national parks on land. We should lead the world in national parks in the ocean, and I'm proud that we're doing that. OK, let's go to the other half. The other half... Um, it's quite... A, the other half, I've been saying for a while that I've been waiting for the advice to come from my department. Uh, I was to have a on media... The, on the super trawler. On the super trawler. I was to have a media conference tomorrow morning, uh, but I have signed off on it over the last hour and a half or so before I came here. Uh, so Signed off on what, exactly? OK. The advice that I've received uh, is this. First of all, under national environmental law, I don't have the legal power to block it altogether. Uh, what I do have is the legal power to impose a number of restrictions on it uh, based on the impact that it can have, not on the fish that it's targeting, but on the bycatch, the seals, the dolphins, the other fish that uh, are protected and listed and I have a responsibility for. So... What I've signed off on today is effectively the big vessel will have to fish with the rules so that the impact it has on the environment is no more than if it was fishing like a small vessel. So if, uh, for so example... It, how is that going to be economical for a giant trawler whose well, very basis is to fish vastly more well, than any other Whether it's economical fish, or not, fisher. after they see the conditions, that's a decision for them, not a decision for me. Uh, but, for example... Uh, if they're on the east coast and they, uh, they catch a dolphin, which they're not meant to catch, then the net goes up. They have to travel 50 nautical miles before the net's allowed to go down again. Um, if they're going, there's similar rules uh, for seals for the Australian sea lion, uh, which is particularly low in numbers. We've carved out the entire area, which is its breeding ground, and said it can't go to those particular areas at all. Uh, so in terms of putting the rules in place, there should be no greater impact than if it were a small vessel. Whether it's now economic or not for them is a decision for them. Uh, here's a question from the floor. We'll go to that and I'll just quickly... Uh, well, go ahead, sir. Yes. Uh, how are you going to enforce those uh, conditions that you just mentioned? Uh, because I've added another condition, uh, which is they have to have our monitors on board 24 hours. They also have to have a camera within the net, which has to be fully monitored every day and they have to send reports back for all of those, uh, any interception. So to have one monitor wouldn't be, probably wouldn't get them over the line because whenever the net's in the water, they have to have one of our people on deck watching and making sure. Plus you've got the camera underwater to, uh, to make sure that we, we know what's happening. And I've also proposed conditions where all of that ends up being publicly reported, so the public know exactly what's going on. Too. OK, um, uh, we can't have the whole press conference here, but um, <laughs> to what degree have you limited their catch? Um, you, you say they shouldn't have an impact greater than a smaller vessel, but they're a huge vessel with many more nets and many more fishermen and on board, and they're yeah. going to be trawling all around the coast. So um, what's the limit? No, the, the catch limit had already been imposed on the fishery. So the catch limit exists. The company that has bought the boat already owned the right to catch a particular volume of fish. So in terms of the fish that they're targeting, that part of it has already been measured as sustainable. The question though with this one is, instead of 20 boats going out to all different parts of a huge fishery that goes all the way around Queensland and under South Australia, uh, do you get a different impact on your dolphins, your seals, your sea lions, if you catch all of that in a very localised area? And so the total catch for what they're targeting 
no change for what they're not meant to catch. If they get it, they've got to move and move substantial distances. OK, we'll quickly get a response from Fiona now. She's listening to this. Well, yeah, I certainly am. Well, not being a, a Minister for the Environment or for Fisheries or having a department to advise me, I can just come at it from, I guess, the background of agricultural, because mm. agricultural fisheries is, is all very similar. I can, I can understand the, the, the company in the wanting to move to the, to the economies of scale. This is the way we're going in the world. It's the way agriculture is. But having just, having just listened to the Minister, I mean, all, all sounds great, um, but it is this issue of the bycatch and particularly that localised impact from that very large vessel, that environmental impact that it's potentially going to have locally. Now, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what the Minister says at the press conference tomorrow to get a bit more of an understanding of all of this, but there are some, some real concerns out there but recognising the fact that it's completely understandable the company's moving in this direction. Angry, I've seen you uh, shaking your head there. Are you angry? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, anger is one emotion that I feel. I, I see, you know, totally like most people, I don't understand the complexity of this at all. So I look at it, I'm a simple person, I look at things in a very, very simple way. What the hell is... Oh, excuse me. What, what is this ship from another country doing in our waters. They're not our fish, but they're in our waters. I mean, they're our fish to catch mm. in our waters. What is it doing here in the first place? That's the thing, that's the question that I got to ask myself is, why would any government that looks after Australia first and foremost allow a ship like this, it's a factory ship, let's not get, you know, our terminology, and we can't even police the whaling, you know, the, so the so-called scientific whaling that we tolerate year after year after year from Japan. How are we going to administer? How are we going to regulate this? What the hell is that shit? What is it doing here in our waters? All right, fishing we, we, we in get our a brief response. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I brief, just... brief, because we have other yeah. questions to do with. You got a, Seafish Tasmania already owned the rights to catch the fish. They then had a transaction to take control of the vessel. That's, that's how this is eventuated in the first place. So you're saying it's a pseudo-Australian catch, effectively? Yeah, look, there's, there's a whole lot of foreign ownership and different issues, but Seafish Tasmania already had the entitlement to catch the amount of fish that they're talking about. The method they're using, completely different to what we've dealt with before, and that's why I've put the conditions in place that I've put in. OK, let's move on. 